Okay, so um, I felt that I should update um, the how to register tutorial um, that I've used in the past for students um, because there has been a new way created for students to access the schedule builder. Remember the schedule builder is the new way to register for classes. Um, I feel as well as some other students have made com uh, comments <clears throat> that it is an easier way to register and to be prepared. Um, you can actually place classes in a shopping cart, leave them there, and then go back when it's your time to register and then just register for them. Um, it should make registering um, a lot easier, fingers crossed, in the future. Um, so we'll jump into it. Normally, um, not normally. In order to get to Schedule Builder, you always have to start with the portal. So you have to log into your portal um, and then you will click on a student self-service link that should be right there. Mine says employee self-service. My main, um, main category at Indiana State is an employee. So that's the default there. I can get to the student self-service. I just have a different so when you click on your quick links section and go to student self-service, it will pull up your student self-service. Um, remember all tons of links on the left-hand side to choose from, and then your information on the right-hand side. Anytime you owe any money, it will always populate in this area, and then you can just click view or pay bills online. Okay, you should also see your assigned advisor here. Um, you will not be assigned an advisor until after you complete the required online orientation. That's just the new process that's being used. Um, but you're going to go to your MySAM. So you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on MySAM. <clears throat> okay. When you do that, it will open up your MySAM. Now, I'm not going to scroll or do anything because this is a student's MySAM. Um, and I don't want, I can't show you any sort of grades or anything like that. So we're not going to. We're not gonna scroll anything because <laughs> we don't really have to scroll. Um, and working with your advisor and, and maybe even not working with your advisor, right? Um, for myself, after the first week of school is over, I go into every single student's um, MySAM who is registered at Indiana State University and is tied to me and I'll update your MySAM plan. Um, <clears throat> so the plans would be lined out for uh, fall 23 if you changed up your classes and then spring 24 if you have any other additional classes. If this student doesn't have any other classes. They're in a summer class. They're registered for some fall classes and then that's it. Hopefully we get them into the nursing program. But when you want to register for classes, all you have to do is go up here and hover over external links directly from your MySAM, right? Super cool. So then you click on Schedule Builder. And then it will take you to the Schedule Builder. Okay. You want to submit the term you're registering for and then save and continue. Okay. Now, of course, this is my student ID. I don't care if you see my student ID, it doesn't matter to me. Um, of course, my student status doesn't prohibit registration. I'm no longer a student at Indiana State, so I'm gonna have those errors that are, are popped up um, on this for me. Let me actually get do something real quick, get rid of this. Okay, so we are looking at registering for classes for fall. Under your course status, this should be the default, open classes only. Okay. Now, if you are a BSN student, meaning you're in the School of Nursing and you're registering for BSN courses, you will have to change this to open and full classes. As you know, you are given overrides to register for some of your classes and we have zeroed them out. So by zeroing them out, they are in effect full. Okay. So you will not see those classes. You will not be able to access them pick them out, register for them, unless you select the full, okay? That's for people who are in School of Nursing. For students who are in the pre-LPN to BSN track or pre-traditional track or pre-any track, we always wanna focus on the open classes, okay? Then 
campuses, the default will be all campuses selected. Okay. Now for LPN to BSN students, you are online. So we need that changed to online and distance only. Traditional track, you will leave it on select all campuses because you're just gonna search all. So you want on-campus classes and online classes, okay? Term, you always wanna make sure you're registering for the correct term, okay? Um, LPN to BSN students, by selecting the online and distance, it only shows you online and distance classes. That's it. So that's super helpful in registering. Therefore, we should never have the issue um, of students registering for on-campus classes and is by using this system. Okay. So now that all of our parameters and attributes are set, we want to add a course. Now, there's multiple different ways that you can add a course. You can add a course by subject. So if I pull on subject, oops, sorry, I'm trying to turn my phone off here, it's not working. Um, you can add by subject. So if I wanted to look at an accounting class, I just select accounting, 301, and then it'll pull up this. If this is the accounting course that I want, then I hit add course. Okay, um, most of you like biology, human anatomy. Okay, that would be a course that um, everyone in the School of Nursing would be taking. Okay, so once you find the course that you want, you hit add course. Okay, then it pulls it over to the right. Now, if you have a course that has a corresponding lab, don't forget you have to come back select the lab and then add the lab. So it pops it <clears throat> over here to the right under courses. Okay, so that's one way that you can select classes is just by selecting the subject. Um, another way is just by foundational studies. So it will show you a list of foundational studies classes that still have seats available. That's the only thing it's gonna show you. So if I click on ethics, it'll only show me the business and construction class because those are the only two classes that have seats right now. So instead of clicking class by class through your MySAM to look and see if there's seats, this is a great way to just kind of drill it down quickly and get to only the courses that have seats. Okay, so that's a great way to do it. I've never played with transfer in, so I'm not even gonna touch on that. Um, you can sort by instructor. I've never done that either. It doesn't matter who the instructor is really. It's fine. Um, by CRN, this is particularly important again for students who are in the School of Nursing because when we provide you that override to register, when you receive that registration override email from registration and records, it'll say you have been cleared to register for this course and then it provides you with a CRN. So when you get that override, you come here, you type in the CRN. Ah, yay, it added. <laughs> so, and then it'll add the course over to the right. Okay. Now, for pre-nursing students, as well as some students in the program, you can also use by degree work. Okay, I don't have any active degree plans because again, I'm not a student, um, but this student whose plan that I had initially pulled up does have a plan. So when they click on the degree works tab, it pulls all of these courses up for them already. They don't have to search for them. They don't have to look for them. It pulls them there. Okay, now depending on when you register, so if if I meet with a student in, um, we'll talk about the upcoming semester, so late October, mid to late October, but they don't register until December, right? They missed their registration time frame and they choose not to register and get themselves enrolled until December, then your plan could in effect be out of date. Um, when I meet with a student, when I create a plan, I use the best available information at that time, um, as all advisors do across campus. So generally we will only put in courses that have seats or that we see are gonna be available.
But if you don't register on time, then that could severely impact your ability to take the courses that are in the plan. Um, as some students are finding out right now, classes are full um, and it's kind of a waiting game to see if anyone's gonna drop uh, so we can get seen. But anyway, um, that is the best way, especially for pre-nursing students to register for classes. Um, again, once all those classes show, it'll uh, have a button that'll say select all. So you select them all and then it'll say add courses and then you move them and um, it moves them over here to the right hand side, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I deleted the classes and we actually need a course to play with. So I'm gonna re-add it. So there's a net human anatomy. It's added. So now what we're gonna do after the course is added on the right, we're gonna hit back to generate schedules. Okay. Yeah. Um you can add breaks for the uh, LPN to BSN students, that's really not necessary. Your courses are all going to be online, okay? But for traditional on-campus students or students taking courses on campus, adding a break can be extremely helpful, especially if you work, um, if you're a student athlete, if you have other commitments that draw you away from campus or can't take classes for specific reasons, um, you can create a break. So you can say, I want to add a break. You can add the break. You can title the break. Start state when you want the break to occur, select weekdays. Of course, we don't really have, well, no, clinicals, yeah, on Saturdays, <laughs> take that back. Um, so you can put the break times in on Saturdays and Sundays even. You can select if you want it ongoing or just for the specific term. Sometimes work schedules change semester to semester. Um, so you can go back in and change up the break and edit that. Okay. But we're going to go back because we're not going to end up. Um, once you have your courses listed here, you're going to select generate schedules. Now, this is an online class. It's the, um, meets the parameters that I selected. And there's only one online anatomy course listed for the fall. So of course it just pulled up one class. Okay. Um, in order to see this, I click view. And then it'll be here. It'll show me how many seats are open. Um, if you're an online student, again, you want to make sure that under days and times, it says web web. Um, if it has a section number that starts with a three, but it has days and times listed here, then that means that that course is synchronous and has specific days and times you need to meet. So I would get rid of that class if you're an online student. Um, <clears throat> If it doesn't start with a three, if that section number doesn't start with a three, go back to the drawing board, redo your attributes and your search parameters, something's wrong. No online or distance student can be in an on-campus class, okay? Um, once you have the classes listed here that you want, then you select send to shopping cart. Once they're in your shopping cart, you can walk away. Okay, if it's not your time to register, you can walk away. So in October, I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you start looking at your MySAM, you start looking at classes you want to take for the spring semester, um, start looking for blocks and all of that fun stuff in the School of Nursing, um, and get an idea of the classes that you may want to take. Look at your plan, see if it's been updated by your academic advice. Um, Get in here, put the course in your shopping cart. And then in November, when registration starts, when it's your time to register, you just come back in here, you hit. So if I were to say it'll work, should work. So I closed that, just left it in my shopping cart. Go back now. Oh, it did not save it. Oh, no. Ah, this says summer 2023. So I have to change it. Fall. And then it is there. Oh, I was just like, I have to totally do this whole thing over. So that course is still there. So when it's my time to register, then I would just hit register. And then it'll say confirm you on I'm not going to go any further because it's going to give me a whole bunch of errors um, <laughs> process. Um, but it'll ask you if you want to confirm to register. You hit yes. 
and then it'll ask you for your advisement pin. You enter your advisement pin, and then it should register you for the course. If you have any issues or errors that pop up with registering, take a screenshot, email that information to your advisor. Once we get that information, then we can look and troubleshoot um, as to what the issue may be and try and help you resolve and fix that. And there's a number of times where students will just send us emails and say, hey, I can't register. Um, it gave me a prereq error or something like that, some sort of error. <clears throat> or just very broad, it gave me an error. Then we have to kind of communicate back which error we kind of need to know what's going on so, so we can help. Um, I hope all of that makes sense. I hope it helps. Um, like I said, this is a really great way to register for classes. Um, it shows you prereqs up front. Um, so like in this area, once I added this course to this, this courses sections, right underneath it, it has prereqs listed. And if I click on it, then it tells me what it is, right? Prerequisite concurrent enrollment in 231 and the 231 lab. Our other um, registration system does not do that. If it doesn't give you the prereqs up front. You just kind of find out about them after you try to register, okay? Normally in your plan, um, if I've done a good job and your advisor has done a good job, we check the prereqs beforehand to make sure that we're not advising you to take any classes, A, that you're not ready for, and B, that you don't have the prereqs <clears throat> for, excuse me. So your, your plan should be accurate, but I mean, mistakes do happen. Um, hopefully not, but yes, mistakes happen. I've, I've made mistakes like that before. Um, I missed that a student didn't do microbiology and I put pathophysiology before they had their microbiology done. So um, we just apologize and try and fix it and get you guys to register in the correct courses. If you have any questions whatsoever, um, please, please make sure that you are communicating with your advisor, communicate with them monthly, make appointments with them, go in and see them. If you're a campus student, um, if you're an online student, email them frequently, uh, make appointments with us, whatever you need to do to make sure that you're on the correct track and path for completing your program. All right, hopefully everybody has a great day. Take care.